Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am here with another Magic Maker project for Hobby Hoppers. This is the last of these Halloween cards in this little series that I'm doing. And I'm going to dive right in and show you how I made it. So first up, this is the card that I found that is inspiring today's project. It is just stunning. That background is gorgeous. I don't know if I'll be able to recreate too much of it, but I definitely love the color scheme and I'm going to try and run with something similar. So for my sky, I'm using some black suet, seedless preserves, and picked raspberry. For the sand down the bottom, I'm keeping it very warm with Victorian velvet, tea dye, and maybe a little frayed burlap. I don't know if that is quite the right color. I'll probably focus more on these two. The stamps I'll be using today will be bits and pieces from the Sweet Spiders stamp set. I love this cactus border, but I haven't used it yet, so I'll be doing that in my background. Now, these are some super old sets, but I feel like I just want these little bats in my background somewhere on the sky and then i'm going to be using my critters in the desert stamp set before i get started i'm going to apologize now for the amount of wildlife noise that is happening around my house today i have no idea what's going on all the birds are out i'm going to get started on my background first so that it has time to dry for that i have a piece of white cardstock cut from my large stitch rectangle i've also got some black cardstock out for my background with that cactus border i've also got some scraps of white cardstock for stamping of my other images i'll also be adding a little bit of sparkle with this watercolor set to make my night sky starry okay with my background i'm going to start with my lightest color first and then work my way up I'm not sure exactly where I want my cactus line to go. I'm thinking maybe about that point of the background. I'm not sure. I will just <laughs> ink up and hope for the best. I picked up the wrong tool. It was going to be nice and purple for a while. I was wondering why it was blending so nicely. Most of it was pink anyway. some black soot to darken up the edges and we'll see how that goes. Now the card that I am basing this one off or this background off, the background was a little more adventurous and had a lot more black. So I am just going to add a little more and see if I like it. I think that's about as far as I will go with this one. Okay, my next step with this one is to add some of these watercolors. I am going to go with the red gold. I thought something nice and like really warm would look good against this background. When using things like watercolors or doing splatters on my background, I tend not to dip again back into the colors or back into water. And this is because the longer you do this, the smaller those droplets become over time. And I figured it just gives it, a, I don't know, a bit of a more realistic look that all the dots aren't uniform. And that should look really good as a night sky because some stars are closer and some are further away. I'm gonna set this aside to dry and I think maybe you can see that. It is looking very, very pretty. Okay, so I'm playing around with my background and I absolutely love how this looks against that. My only problem is I don't know now how to make this work on top of it. Uh, I am going to ink this bit up anyway and then we might just have to play with things and see what we come up with. So for my background, I'm going to start with these two because they are just that little bit warmer. And I love that there is pink in this one that might tie into the background nicely. Okay. 
Okay, I do love how that looks. I think that color worked really well. Instead of using the frayed burlap all over this, I think I might just use it for a couple of little dots because I'm still not sure if that's entirely the right color for this card. I'm just going to add the smallest bit of white acrylic to this as well. Okay, so what I've decided to go with is to stick this on. I know it might look a little strange, but I think I've got a good enough idea to fill in the gaps to make that background work and not make it look like there's gaps and things missing. So I will need to trim the edges of this and I can do that in a minute. Gosh, I love how that looks. That has turned out so pretty. So what I'm going to do to trim this down is just turn it over at the back and line my cuts up as neatly as I can with the edges of this. Before I stamp out my little characters today, I am just going to stamp these tiny little bats directly onto my background. This stamp set is an old one, but it's one of my favorites and I'm just gonna pinch that little pumpkin bucket from this so that my characters have their little trick-or-treat buckets. Ooh, I nearly wore it and I did a little bit. Okay, so these are the colors that I am planning on using with this card. Some more might sneak in in a minute, but this is what I'm starting with. slightly different technique this time. I am taking more inspiration from that card. I do think it is very, very cute. And I think it will look really good with the white highlights and the dots that I typically do as well. And while I'm coloring in, now is the perfect time to talk about Hobby Hoppers. So if you don't know what Hobby Hoppers is, it is a small online Aussie business run solely by the owner Trish. And it is where I find all of my lawn fawn new release items, as well as a whole heap of other stuff for making cards like card bases, foam tapes, my jelly roll pens, even my watercolor pigments that I use for my starry backgrounds. Everything that I use today from Hobby Hoppers will be linked in the description box below, as well as the link to the website so that you can check it out and have a look at all the amazing things that's Trish Docs. It has been so much fun doing this little series of Halloween cards over the past few weeks. It's been really nice to get back into card making and crafting in general because it's been such a long time since I've, I guess, made time for this. My life has been so busy and so hectic and so upside down for what feels like an entire year. And now it's just really nice to sit down and do something that just, I guess, brings me a little bit more peace. And I'm not sure about how I'm coloring the characters here. I am just going for colors that match uh, the background, I guess. I don't want the green to stand out too much because there's not a lot of green in this card. And I feel like by doing this step right now, I'm just making it look more green. I'm not sure. I feel like that's kind of a good look. It just makes it a little bit more desert-like instead of so vibrant. I like it. That's unusual. I haven't done anything like that before. Okay, back to coloring. So I might leave you with a little bit of music and I'll see you on the other side of this because I get very distracted while I color in and I often forget to talk <laughs> and there'll be just long pauses of <laughs> me breathing as I concentrate.
Now I'm not going to need this whole spider. All I need is her little hat. So I'm not going to be coloring in the rest of her. coloring in this lollipop I thought I'd ask what your favorite Halloween candy is or lolly in general there have been such cute ones in my local shops this year so many lollipops with like this swirly design with yellow and orange I'm just tempted to buy a whole box of them for myself <laughs> they're so cute I love anything themed although like I was talking about in the last video maybe not candy corn because that one just is a little bit of an odd flavor for me makes very great decorations and like some people said they also use it for decoration so I am very tempted to just grab a bag to use in maybe some of my jars to decorate for the next couple of weeks and as for my favorite I don't believe you can ever go wrong with chocolate this guy's looking cute I don't actually know what color road runners are I'm just hoping for the best and keeping, I guess, on theme just with the colors. I might add some of that red violet to this little guy. I just don't know how. Maybe not much more than that because I don't want to do anything that's going to stand out too much or look a bit silly. This little guy I might do in like a brownish color. I'm pretty sure desert foxes are an orangey brown. Don't quote me on that though. <laughs> I don't know much about them other than they're adorable. I think that's looking pretty cute. Okay, now that all of them are done, I'm going to add some white highlights to these little critters. Oh, I might just color his little nose. Oh, I don't know if I've gone too dark. I think that's okay. I don't think that looks bad. Okay, now it's time for my white highlights. These are the little images with their white highlights. I'm now going to fussy cut them out and then get them ready for my card. Okay, crafty friends, you know how I feel about getting out all of my embossing things, but I got it all out. I feel like this card is worth it. And I feel like a white embossed sentiment in this sky is going to look far better than maybe a black one stamped onto the sand down below. So I got everything out and I'm going to make it happen. I'm probably going to go with a mix of sentiments from these sets. I'll probably maybe use the Happy Halloween and maybe you desert the best Halloween. Maybe that'll work. I feel like that'll be good. So let's work with that. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is add some anti-static powder so that my embossing powder doesn't stick where it shouldn't. Then I'm going to add my embossing ink. Usually I also just tap this down so that I can see where it's going to be on my background and if I'm happy with it. And I try not to stamp more than once if I can help it, although we are stamping over a bit of texture there. So, okay, that's it. I don't want to ruin it. Otherwise my letters seem to just, I push too hard and they bleed, I guess. They stick out. They just do what they're not meant to do. Okay, so let's quickly add some embossing powder to this. And then I'm going to melt this with my heat tool. And there we have it. And the rest of that powder can just be wiped off with maybe a microfiber cloth or a tissue or just anything that's dry. Not my little squeegee here that is wet and will wipe off all my ink. Now, before I go adding dimension to the front of this card, I am just going to flip it over and add some double-sided tape to this. So what I've done with this little stamp here is 
add some of my white jelly roll over the little bits of stamp that were left over from that spider that we don't need anymore. Now I do know where I want this little guy to go so I'm going to remove the backing to this foam tape and add him down the front and center. And this cheeky little guy is running away with this little bag and so I'm going to have like a little trail of candy corn behind him. As for my little fox I also know where I'm going to place this one so I'm going to again remove the backing to this tape and stick it down. Now that the jelly roll has dried on this, I'm also going to add the little hat to our little desert fox. As much as I love all the dimension going on, I think adding foam tape to this cactus might make it stand out a little too much. And then I'll have too many bulky things going on um, in one patch, I think. At least that's how I'm feeling right now. So I'm going to pop this about here. I want to be able to see my bats in the background and I don't want to line it up too much with that fox. And then I'm going to add my little spider on top. And I think I'll also just stick that down flat. And this little cutie up here can be holding onto this lollipop. I think the thing that's bothering me the most about this little pumpkin is how I've fussy cut it and haven't cut the inside of uh, the handle and it's so white. So what I'm going to do is grab one of those background color inks, water down just a tiny bit and probably just paint the inside of that so that it doesn't stand out quite so much. Okay, so I'm going to do that now for that tiny little bit. I think the smallest amount of tea dye should work just fine for that. That looks like it's doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> and I think already just doing a little bit of that is just dulling it down and not making it stand out quite so much. I might even add a little bit to this guy. I feel like that just looks a little better. It's just not something that draws your eye to it immediately. Okay, so now is the time to pop this on the card base. I hope you've enjoyed the last few weeks of all these Halloween videos. I have had so much fun. I am probably going to go into hibernation for a little bit. I will pop up with some Christmas cards soon, but probably not so many in such quick succession because I do have a couple of big events and things going on in my life over the next few months that I desperately need to prepare for. But I've had so much fun with you and if you've had fun too, I hope you will subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss my next videos. And I hope that you will give this one a thumbs up so that more of our crafty friends can find me. Okie dokie, so here it is. Here is that adorable card. I love that background. I'm so grateful for the Lawn Fawn groups, especially the Lawn Fawn Addicts group on Facebook where I got the inspiration for this card. As I said before, everything that I've used today the links will be in the description box below, as well as the link for Hobby Hoppers. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.